Hello everyone, this is Jefferson Hendricks of the Robinson Film Center and Centenary College here in Shreveport, welcoming you to Film 101, one of the Robinson Film Center's online presentations where we make film recommendations for you to watch at home while we are all practicing social distancing in this rather strange time that we're living in. Today's film that I'm going to recommend, many of you may have seen it, but maybe you haven't seen it in a while. It's entitled A Ghost Story, directed by David Lowry, a 2017 film starring Casey Affleck and Rooney Mara as a young couple who are living in a small house in Texas. And very quickly on, so I'm not spoiling anything for you, Casey Affleck's character dies. The husband dies. Almost as quickly, uh, he returns as a ghostly figure, literally wrapped in a sheet, almost like a bad Halloween costume. Now, if you haven't seen the film, that description may immediately turn you off and you say, that sounds silly, that sounds goofy, I don't need to watch that. But I would argue that you do need to watch it, or perhaps you need to watch it again. In this strange time that we're living in, uh, this film, which is rather strange, but, but not a horror film by any means. It's in some ways certainly not ghostly in the conventional sense. It is, however, very much in line with the stories we've been talking about on this series the past few weeks, those films in the fantastic. Uh, and again, what, what do I mean by the fantastic? Well, we all know what rea reality is, we think. Uh, it is the world of this and that, our skin, uh, this screen that I'm speaking into. But as you know, all that you're seeing right now is a digital image of me. Uh, for all you know, I might be an AI. Someday, people speaking like this will be. Maybe some already are. But right now, we're not quite there yet. Uh, and so, we still have a strong sense, we believe, of what is real. A ghost story, Lowry's story that he's created here, is a very, very interesting film that ask us to think very seriously. It is ultimately a meditation on life and death. Pretty basic ideas. Um, so we have this character that dies. He returns. And he doesn't quite haunt his wife. But he is a presence around his wife. In the house that they had lived in. And really what he does is he watches her. And it's an amazing job that Casey Affleck does underneath this costume, this sheet, so to speak, because he has very little physical movement uh, in, in the way that you mostly associate with acting. But this is an intensely felt film. Uh, it essentially ask what happens after death. It, uh, it essentially asks, what does it mean to lose someone? What does it mean to pass on? And what happens if you choose not to pass on? It raises the question of whether we might actually have that option. And what happens if you get stuck? Sort of like in an older sense of purgatory. Ultimately, the film is very much about time and space, space and place. The ghost is attached to this house, the space where he and his wife were together. But the ghost doesn't have the same sense of time of linear time that we do. And so the ghost moves in and out of time past and time forward. And, um, and we get this strong sense of, of time passing. We get a strong sense of 
this theme that is omnipresent in literature called mutability. The, the notion that everything changes. And ultimately, that's what this film is about. It is one of the most unusual films because it's not an action film. It is not a horror film that frightens you. Uh, but it is an intensely meditative film, an intensely emotional film, ultimately, I would argue. Uh, it, it, is, it is not for everyone, perhaps. It is a, it is a strange film. It is a bit challenging. It's totally easy to understand. Um, and, and ultimately, it asks you to, to think about uh, the issues that it takes very, very seriously. Ultimately, this film, uh, I think, is a wonderful film. It is as good an example as I know of, of the power of cinema to transfix us, to, to make us look at the screen and to really interact with it on an emotional level. Ultimately, it shows us uh, a cinema that can move us and make us think at the same time. And any film that does that, I think, is a really good film. So, I hope you'll give it a try if you haven't seen it before, and if you haven't seen it lately, maybe it's worth going back to. In this strange time that we live in, a time where many of us have more time than normal to get off of our hamster wheel and think a little bit, this film is a wonderful film to do that. So, I hope you enjoy A Ghost Story, and I'll leave you with a few words from a famous 17th century English poet, Robert Herrick, that when I was rethinking this film, his, uh, his poem came to mind. Just a few lines. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may, old time is still a-flying, and this same flower that smiles today, tomorrow will be dying. The glorious lamp of heaven, the sun, the higher he's a-getting, the sooner will his race be run and nearer he's to setting. These words remind me, again, that we can never grab hold of that which we want to grab hold to. Ultimately, it's going to always escape us. And while on one level that's a sad thought, on another level, it's just a fact of life. And I think those of us who uh, will understand that and who can live with that and incorporate that into our daily philosophy, we have a much better sense of uh, getting along in this thing called life. Thank you very much for listening and hope you enjoy A Ghost Story.